the tileable texture. Hello and welcome to the final part of this course. Here we are going to learn the most technical part so far. We are going to tile our texture. As I mentioned earlier, tiling a texture means that we duplicate the level we have to the left, right, up or down. Everything should fit in perfectly and you won't notice any cuts anywhere. The first thing we need to do is to make our document a perfect square so our texture can fit in. Go to Document and there you can adjust the resolution of the texture. You need to uncheck the Pro options so the scale doesn't readjust on its own. I'm going to make it 1024 by 1024 but you can set it to whatever resolution you want as long as it's a square. Then hit Resize and we'll get a message. Hit OK and now it looks like everything is deformed. We just need to create a new document pressing Ctrl N and what we had in the viewpoints will be erased. Then we'll get our model up again and activate Edit and our problem is solved. Our document is now a square. Using the zoom on the panel on the right, we'll zoom out so we can see the whole document. Now we're going to use the other level we created earlier. This level is a mold to make sure everything fits in, perfectly square. As we modify the other layer, sometimes the edges deform or change shape and it's not completely straight. This could be a problem when we're making the texture, so we use this mold so we don't have any problems. Just leave the level visible and then press F and as you see it adjusts perfectly to the screen. Now hide the layer but don't delete it as we'll be using it again later. Ok, so we have everything. We have our floor with the stones and we have our three tiles. Now we can start to place everything with a transpose master. The most important thing to know is if the square we're using as the floor is the limit of our texture, meaning that if something is protruding on one side, we need this to be repeated on the other side so everything fits. In my case, I'm going to try so that it only sticks out on the sides, as on the top and bottom is much more tedious work. Now we've made it to protrude from one side, we need to do the same on the other side. How do we do that? The first thing we need to do is duplicate the subtool to obtain two equal tiles in the same position and then go to the deformation menu. In the offset option, input 100. It's important to see on what axis the offset is acting on. As we want it on the side, we'll use it on the X axis. Then we'll keep pressing the repeat to active button until we get to the point where we can see on the right what we can't see on the left. Don't try to do this manually as it won't be perfect. This way it all fits, this way it all fits in properly. We can place the tiles in between easily enough as they're not sticking out anywhere. Now this is where we can use the two sides I mentioned earlier, so it looks as though there are two different tiles. We need to rotate the tile with the transpose master 180 degrees. Bear in mind that as we rotate the tile, this might rise, in which case you'll need to lower it. Everything needs to be at ground level. If you press shift while you rotate, you can fit everything in perfectly at 180 degrees, but don't worry if it's not exact. So 
So a tile fits in well. We could deform it with a transpose master, scaling it with a re little red ball from the move tool. This won't damage our tile if we don't overdo it. You can place some tiles further up, some more to the inside. They get different height levels. If you want to stick out on one side, then you need to supplicate it and with the offset, take it to the other side to make sure it fits. It's a good idea to leave some gaps in the middle areas, so the floor is visible. Maybe rotate them to the sides or even submerge one in the earth to give the impression of a very worn out floor, where the state of tiles has suffered over time. As a tip I recommend that you first square up the sides, as this is the hardest area. The center you can do as you like, as this won't give you any problems. Another tip to remember is to keep paying attention to the overall look on the floor. It should look as though not all the tiles are the same. Scale them, invert them, submerge them in the dirt. Try not to repeat the same tile too many times. Make sure nothing sticks out of the top and bottom areas. If something is protruding, then you'd have to start the whole thing all over again. If you need to, then you can adjust the size of the tiles to fit whatever you're looking for.
When all the tiles are in place, we are satisfied with the result and we've made sure nothing is sticking out from the top or bottom, we can start to detail the texture. So we could place some of the stones we made where we think they look good or we could even adjust the stones on our texture to differentiate them, giving them cracks for example. Just remember that if you modify something on the edge, then you need to do it on the other side too, or it won't fit. With the masks, you can select the stones you want to relocate and move them with the transpose master to wherever you want. For me, it's fine like this, so we are now going to repeat the same process we did at the beginning of the video, selecting our level and making it completely straight in our view, leaving only the level visible and pressing F to make everything fit on our screen. Make everything visible again and you have an idea of what the tileable texture looks like. Now we are going to change the material of our floor. We bring out two texture maps, the normal map and the height map. To bring out the normal map, we need to select the normal RGB matte material and automatically our texture will acquire the colors of a normal map. Now, to make sure we tile perfectly, we need to deactivate the edit mode and once this is done, press the tile symbol on our keyboard or add if you have a UK keyboard. Well, this is pressed, right click and drag our texture. We see that it easily repeats itself and fits in perfectly. If you observe here down the middle, there's a very thin line that goes from top to bottom and from right to left. This is something that usually happens as when ZBrush calculates, there's always a pixel or two that doesn't fit in and we get these lines. Let's see two different ways of fixing this problem. The first thing we need to do is to save the texture maps as they are now. We need to place the texture so that we can see those two lines and correct that error. When we have the position we want, we shouldn't move anything from our current view. Otherwise, we need the two maps again. To get the height map, we'll go to Alpha and select Grab Dock. To get the normal map, we go to Texture and also select Grab Dock. That way we get the two maps already saved. Now let's fix the lines. The first solution is in ZBrush and the other in Photoshop. To fix the lines in ZBrush, you need to place the texture that we saved earlier so we can edit it. Create a new tool with a level and remember to activate the Make Polymesh 3D. Then. Go to the displacement map and in the little box that appears when you click on the menu, you'll see all the alphas on the left side and also the alpha we saved earlier, the height map. Select this. Then we need to adjust the intensity with which we're going to apply this map. We'll put 0.5. Now we see that everything looks strange. This is because we haven't subdivided the level. We need to subdivide it a few times to apply the map properly. Don't forget to remove the smooth. I'll subdivide it 7 times and now return to the displacement map and try out the intensity until we get one that works. As you can see, what this map generates is the volume that we obtained earlier automatically. This map gives numerical information to the level. The pure white color's value is 1 and the blacks is 0.1, which means that it has to reach the maximum and the maximum depends on the intensity we give it. 0 means it stays as it is and in the middle is the scale of grays. Once we have the level just as we want it, okay, 
Once we have the level just as we want it, we just need to take the trim dynamic and erase those lines. You can also go softening with shift or use the brush you find most comfortable and gradually make that line disappear. Then, to save the map again, make sure it tiles properly by pressing F to adjust the screen to the level and then disable edit mode. Then with the tiles key, we can move around the texture and once again we'll grab dog with both the normal map and the height map. This method is more controlled but more tedious. Now I'll show you the other way to fix the problem that's quicker although not so controlled. To fix this in Photoshop, we need to export the two maps to this program. So, when we've selected GrabDoc and ZBrush, we'll select Export in the same window. As you can see, the line is perfectly visible. We need to correct it in both maps, the normal and the height. For this, select the Spot Healing tool or press J on your keyboard. With this tool, paint over the line and see how it gradually disappears. When we've corrected this on the normal map, we need to correct it on the height map in the same way. It's quite fast with a tool. It's quite fast with this tool. And with this, you'll have two perfect maps to apply to any graphic engine or video game. I hope you enjoyed this course and you found it useful. See you next time. Bye!